Today on Perpetual Projects, we're going to go over 10 things to check on your carbureted engine if you're having problems with it. So in our last video, we got our ignition system all sorted out on this car and everything's working the way it's supposed to. And in doing that, we made it run a lot better, but now it will not come back down to a normal idle and it's still a little bit hard to start when it's cold. So we're going to see if we can address those issues in this video. These are some basic checks that you can do even if your engine is running okay, just to make sure it's performing the way that it's supposed to. The first thing we're gonna check is the accelerator pump. And down inside the carburetor, there are discharge nozzles. And when you pump the gas, you should see a squirt of fuel spray out. And that helps the car when it's cold and you're trying to get it started, it gets it primed. And then it also helps when, it come, when you come off idle to enrich it while the carburetor gets into the, the main metering circuit. As you can see, ours wasn't working, but this is what it should look like. So the next thing that we're gonna check is our idle set screw. And as you can see, ours is not coming all the way back. This should be bottomed out against the stop. One thing that can cause the throttle shaft not to come all the way back is if your throttle cable or linkage is misadjusted. So the way we can check that is there should be a pin in here, but this one's missing it. We're just gonna disconnect that. And as you can see, now ours comes all the way back to idle the way it's supposed to. So this is gonna need to be adjusted. If you have a Mopar, there's a place right here. If you loosen this nut, you can slide this in the bracket to adjust that properly. Now that we've got our throttle cable adjusted properly, our idle set screw will bottom all the way out and that is gonna take care of the major problem that we were having on our engine of not being able to get the idle to come back down and not being able to adjust it with the idle set screw. The fourth thing we're gonna check is the choke pull off, which is this diaphragm or pot right here. The way we're gonna check it is we're gonna pull the vacuum line off, we're gonna hook it up to a vacuum source, which we're using our Mighty Vac. And we'll throw a link in the description if you wanna get you one of these. And we're just gonna pump it up and we should see the choke pull off, pull all the way off and it should stay closed so we have some type of leak in that system. So now we've changed our hose to one that fits a little better and we're gonna see if we can get it to stay open. It still leaks off. So we're gonna go ahead and change this because that is, it's, it's small, but that is a vacuum leak that can cause us other tuning problems. This is the choke pull off on our spare carburetor and I'm just gonna show you what it should do. As you can see, if you look at the vacuum gauge, that is holding solid vacuum, so that one is definitely not leaking. We'll use this one on our carburetor when we put it back together. We're gonna call this 4A, and this is the thermostat for the choke. This one is in the intake manifold. Sometimes they're an electronic one that sits on the side of the carburetor, and all you wanna do is make sure that they're moving when the engine heats up. So what we're gonna do for right now is we're just gonna put a mark here so we can see if that pulls in once the engine is all warmed up. So as you can see, now that our engine is all warmed up, our mark has disappeared. It's actually down inside there. You can kind of see it. That choke thermostat is pulling this down and it's not completely hot right now, but it will go all the way and pull this up tight. The fifth thing on our list to check is your high idle control. And on this carburetor, it's supposed to have this cam is hooked to the choke here. So when the choke is on, the high idle kicks in and kicks the idle up so the car can warm up. As you can see, uh, we're missing a part. So once we get this carburetor put back together, we'll show you what that's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to work. So as you can see, I got our high idle all installed and adjusted the way it's supposed to be. So when you go to start this with pressure, with the choke thermostat putting pressure on the choke, as soon as you touch the gas, that goes up and now it sets the high idle and closes the choke off. The sixth thing that you should check is your float level. And on this carburetor, it is not adjustable or visible from the outside of the carburetor, so you have to take it apart to check it. One way that you can know that you may have a float level problem is if you look inside the carburetor, when the engine is running, if you have fuel dripping out of the boosters, there's a chance that the float level is too high. The seventh thing that we're gonna look at is our needle and seat, which on this carburetor is inside this fitting here. And what, you'll, what you're looking for to know if you might have a needle and seat problem is overflowing out of the bowl vent, which on this carburetor is here. On some carburetors, it's actually inside 
where the air cleaner goes. And if the needle and seat is stuck, it might drip out of the boosters, but it should also be pushing fuel out of your vent and completely flooding the carburetor. So here's an example of a needle and seat. This is the, the needle here. And if you can see right there on the end, I don't know, I can't tell if this is focusing or not. The, this one has a little rubber tip on it. And if this is worn or dented or really hard, that can cause you problems. Also, if this is dirty or the seat down inside there is dirty, it doesn't take much and it'll stick this open and you'll you'll overflow the carburetor with fuel. If they're nice and soft, you can just clean them. If not, they come in a carb kit and you can replace them. This doesn't go to our carburetor, it's just one I had in the drawer. The eighth thing that we wanna check is our fuel filter. And I'd show you the one on this car, but it's installed backwards. And the reason that that's a problem is if you look on here, this has an arrow that says flow that way to the carburetor. Well, the fuel comes in here and any sediment or stuff that the filter catches is gonna catch out here on the outside of the filter where you can see it on these clear ones. Installed backwards, all the stuff that it's catching is inside there and you won't know. We will be able to see if fuel is flowing past it, but we won't know if it's actually plugged up or not. So we're gonna go ahead and change this and install it the right way. The ninth thing that we wanna look for is we wanna make sure that all of the ports that have vacuum on our carburetor and on our engine are plugged so that we don't have vacuum leaks because that can really cause us a nightmare when we're trying to get our carburetor to run right. Some things to look for is around the base plate of the carburetor in the throttle plate here. You've got all these ports and they are all connected to the vacuum and if they're off there then you have unmetered air going into the engine that is not being felt by the carburetor and it can't give you fuel to compensate for that air going in there. Another place is on the manifold here anywhere in the runner where you have a hole these have all got plugs in them but sometimes they have a T that has multiple vacuum lines in it and you need to make sure that all of those ports are plugged as well. One that you don't want to plug is if you have a carburetor like ours that has an emissions style vent on the carburetor, this should go to a charcoal canister, which obviously was not installed on our 66 car. Don't plug that one or you won't be able to get air into the bowl and allow fuel to be sucked out of it. And you can get an assortment of these caps. Uh, we'll throw a link in the description. They're just vinyl and they come in different colors. Each color is a different size and that's the best thing to plug them with. The rubber ones are okay, but they don't seem to last as long as the vinyl ones do. The 10th thing that we're gonna look at is kind of along the same line as the vacuum lines, but specifically the PCV system. The PCV valve is kind of like a tune-up item on older carbureted cars like this. And if you're not sure, just replace it. They're not very expensive and their job is to keep anything from going back into the engine and allowing the carburetor to suck the fumes out of the crankcase. There you go. With our carburetor all fixed up, it idles good, it starts better, the choke works the way it's supposed to. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now that's not a complete list of everything that you need to check on a carburetor, but that's the, the highlights of the more important ones so that you can get it running properly. Now, this car's gonna go. We just gotta get it to, to whoa. And uh, so check out our next video is gonna be getting the brakes working properly. Subscribe, turn notifications on, you know all that, and you'll get notified. See you soon.